Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. How you doing? Uh, we have a beautiful video for you. We're gonna deal with prophecies that that cater to the day. You see a lot of things since Israel. A lot of prophecies is talking about the end time. But we've been talking about the end time, and we've been talking about this stuff from all the seven years that we've been here. So, but we're gonna open you up to begin to look more at what we're saying and we want you to combine it we want you it's like a puzzle we want you to begin to see how real this is because only when you had tragedies did everybody running at it but it's something that we've been doing all the time telling you that you're going to get your land that you are the israelites you are the promised people and this is the promised land over here in america and this is what you need to understand that you're going to get your reparation, all this, all of the above. All these things we've been telling you and we done gave you 21 years of prophecies of the judgment. That in the book, Judgment of America, and the other one is in Black Nostradamus of American history. No one ever before in since Nostradamus time that we know of that have given you 21 years of a nation history before it happened. And we're also giving you seven more years on to that, dealing with the vehement east wind and the, uh, and the Passover. That seven years is happening from 2021 to 2027. And after that, we're telling you about the other 14 years coming up, which is the exodus of the migration into your land, into your nation. And these things are going to happen in the whole world. It's going to shake the whole world up. And you're going to see this. This is what you need to understand. We're going to let you know things before it happens. Now, the title of this lecture is End Time Revelations. The Gathering of the True Israel. End Time Revelations. The Gathering of the True Israel. We're going to start with Jeremiah 23, 3 to 8. Jeremiah 23rd chapter, 3 to 8. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries. And you got to understand the countries, you're going to see this in twofold way. You're going to see it going to be countries and you're going to see this talking about counties. Okay. Now, and I'm going to show you how it, it transform. It, it is going to transform itself like that. I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries. Okay. And you'll see me use country and you'll see me use counties. And I'm going to tell you why I'm using that. Right here, it's going to be, this going to be counties. Another place, it's going to be countries. So I want you to see that. Now, the reason why I say counties is because America have many counties. And we have to understand that. There's many counties in America, and we have to know that. So I'm going to gather out all, all counties, which whether I have driven them, and will bring them again to their fold. And they shall be fruitful. They shall be fruitful. That means they're going to become, a, they're going to be economic power. They shall be fruitful and increase. And they're going to be big socially. They're going to become a large amount of peoples. Okay. Now, this is the thing you have to see in this. Uh, Jeremiah verse 5. Behold, the day comes, said the Lord. Thought. Now, you see what he's saying? He's telling you who this is. The day come and said, the Lord thought, I will raise unto, and this, this is going to be again, into, certain parts, it could be in, unto, but here is into, because you got to take this you and, and turn it into this I. So into, I will take, I will raise into David a righteous branch and a king. So the symbol of David is God showing you that in this symbol of David, in the story of David, you'll hear about David being a prophet, David being one that righteous and one that God was going to use. And what he's saying in this day, in our time, this David, they're going to raise a David. And David, a righteous branch and a king. That's the Messiah the Prince. So we know that the Messiah the Prince is supposed to come uh, at a certain time. 
He's supposed to be born in uh, 1954, October 22nd of 1954, when the commandments go forth to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince. So we know that he's supposed to be born in October 22nd, 1954. But he come forth, he come forth in uh, October the 22nd, 2016. And he's fully developed into who he's supposed to be 70 years, which is uh, 360 days a year, and you convert that 360 days into 365.25 days, that's going to give you 69 years. So when he gets to be 69 years, which was last uh, Sunday of October of 2023, then that's when God is going to start forming a lot around him. A lot of activity going to form around him. God going to bring him to the forefront because this is when God have anointed him. In his 69th birthday, this is when the scriptures say he anointed. See, he got a, God made this person from his birth, October the 22nd, 1954, all the way to October the 22nd, 2023. God have formed this person. And you're going to see this person. This is the person that he's talking about. He's going to turn a righteous branch. He said, he, he will raise a righteous branch. I will raise unto David a righteous branch. And a king, a king, shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth, which is in America. Now, see, most people don't understand if a prophet comes and say, well, this is what's going to happen in America from 2000 to 2020, and it happened, that means he is exercising judgment into the earth. He is telling you before time what's going to happen. And he said justice. That means if I tell you that you're going to get your reparation at a certain time and Donald Trump is going to sign a, 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 a bill that deals with reparation H.R. 40 and he tell you it before it happened in one year eight days Donald Trump can sign a bill to study reparation and then now in 2023 California is filling out the forms and getting everybody ready the people 50 years old and ready for reparation like five million dollars a piece come on now that means that he is there fulfilling his job justice and judgment it's following him. It's in his life. And you have to see that. Go back and study the videos. That's why I leave them on there so you can go back and check me. Okay? Prove me wrong. See, God is in present here. God has resurrected and brought a person from nowhere to somewhere. And evidence is in his in what he's saying because he has wrote two books to tell what God has showed him. There is nobody, nobody in the last four, five, six, seven, eight hundred years wrote in a book an event in a nation showing it repeating itself but this ministry and this person. Nobody showing you how history repeats itself. They talk about it but they don't show it. See, and you got to understand what's going on, what's in front of you, because God is trying to tell you, you've been to be delivered from a condition. You've been to have a time better than you ever had, a dream you were having in your life. But before that, the East, the uh, Bohemian East Wind got to come. That means war got to come. But God let you know when. He's not just letting you know that certain things are going to happen. He's letting you know when, so you be prepared. He wants you to be prepared. Good, bad, grizzly bad. Start from 2021. Good, bad, grizzly bad. Good, bad, grizzly bad. Good. Seven years. Put a check on that. Three of the years already done happened. 2021, 2022, 2023. What happened 2021? Putin, I mean, before that, in Ukraine. Our senators went over to Ukraine and telling them, McConnell and some of the others, telling you, oh, we got your back. Trying to start some mess with Russia because Russia said something. Nobody is checking this, putting checks and balances here. What happened? Russia told America before they went over in Ukraine. Russia told America, you need to give North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, and Texas to these people of color in America. Tonight, new evidence suggests Russia there we go. some metal in American society stretched beyond the election. 
Documents seen exclusively by NBC News appear to show another bizarre campaign to sow unrest in the U.S. Russian operatives last year pitched a plot to manipulate African Americans. One especially disturbing proposal suggests recruiting African Americans with criminal records, giving them sabotage training at camps in Africa, and returning them to the U.S. Another proposal? Encouraging African Americans to push for independent statehood in the South. It does not surprise me at all the extent to which Russia would go to undermine our democracy and really target divisions that already exist within our country. The documents were found in communications between Russians linked to Yevgeny Prigozhin, a catering magnate dubbed Putin's chef, indicted by Robert Mueller for trying to sway the 2016 election. While NBC News cannot independently verify the documents, they were uncovered by an investigative Russian opposition group called the Dossier Center, which, in the past, has revealed authentic material to us. Our adversary is coming at us. We should expect it to happen now leading up to the 2020 election, and these documents indicate we're going to see it on steroids. Well, there's no indication the plans were more than aspirational. Bipartisan members of Congress were so troubled they planned to introduce a bill to guard against these and other potential Russian plots. In America, and the reason they say it because they are one, they are 72 percent orthodox Christians, and they know that scripture. They know the scripture that show that these peoples of color here are the original Jews, and they even knew that they was the original Jews. And they need to give them that land because they need to come back to themselves. They need to build that kingdom that they once had here. The kingdom that they call the Confederate land in the time of, of, of the Civil War, that land that the Confederates dominated was the Hebrew kingdom, what they call the Cherokee kingdom. And if you look at that land and look at uh, Joshua, around the second chapter, it'll show, describe, and you understand type, uh, typograph, typographics, if you understand uh, 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 allograms, and you understand Hebrew typology, it will describe that land to you. That's from the present. That's the land where the beginning of all this started. But no, they want to tell you, oh, it's God in Africa. They don't know, you don't know when they talk about Ethiopia, I mean, not Ethiopia, they talk about the Euphrates, then what you got to do? If you want to know where that land at that they, they use the word Euphrates with, you got to go look at Florida. And you got to look at the borders of the west coast of Florida and look at the borders of that area where the Ethiopia at, and that land mass, and you're going to see the exact thing. See, but they, they, you ain't learning no arts, because they ain't telling you about the arts. The arts is written all over the Bible, but they ain't teaching from the arts. So how are you going to teach the word of God when you ain't teaching from the arts? You heard about and you know about hermeneutics and Hebrew typology, but on the hermeneutic, you're teaching the literals. The church folks teaching the literals. They read the Bible and say, well, this is what the word of God said, and this is what God said, and they lying on God. Because the initials wrote it, and they wrote it in code, and they told you 30 years ago, the Bible is in code. 30 years ago, the Bible is in code. But what church organization, what university, uh, uh, theologian universities went and switched over to learn the codes in order to teach it. You know why they couldn't? Because the people in the secret order would never give it to them. Never give it to them. God have to send you a messenger with it, well equipped with it, coming from thought, so you can learn that. That's what hermeneutics is all about. Who's going to give you, who's going to be the, uh, 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 the hermeneutics? Who's going to be the one to give you the interpretation? A real prophet of God. That's what the Hebrew typology is about. What it is, the prophets of the past write the scripture. They write the knowledge. And then God sent a future prophet in the future that interpret it. It's set up like that in Hebrew typology. That's the way God made it. And I'm that one that God has sent at this time to interpret the scripture, to tell you the truth. It tells you the spirit of truth shall come. The spirit of truth shall come. And you should see all that. Let's move on forward with that. Okay. Uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah verse 5. Behold, the day comes, saith the Lord, the Lord thought 
The day come and say, the Lord thought. Now we got to understand that this is thought talking because this is thought time. Who is Melchizedek? The one that they say Jesus took the priesthood out of. Melchizedek. Okay? Thought is known as Melchizedek and he's known as Hermes. In other names too, but we're dealing with thought with Melchizedek and uh, Hermes and thought. That's what we're going to deal with right now. Okay? The Lord thought, I will raise unto David a righteous branch and a king, king, Messiah the Prince, a king shall reign and prosper and shall ex execute judgment and justice in the earth, in America. Verse 6. In his day, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. The bloodline shall dwell safely. And Judah, Judah, why is it Judah? Because Judah is a ruling tribe. The ruling one. Judah. Judah. And you got to remember that. And where is Judah is at? In Florida. In the land of Florida. That's where Judah is to preside at. In the land of Florida. Which is known in the scripture as Eden. Not the God of Eden. Eden. And you need to look at this people because this is real. We're teaching you revelations that you never heard before. And they are true. Check me. Bring your scars. Bring your scars. Okay? Don't come here half-stepping, bringing your feelings and your emotions. Your feelings are what you feel like. Well, I don't feel like America is the, uh, 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 is the new, is the old Egypt. I don't feel like, people don't go by your feelings. Well, that's like say, uh, you saying to a mechanic, well, I don't feel like it's the, that part of the car. I don't feel, and maybe other people don't want to hear that nonsense. Miss, this is what it is, okay? I done ran the agnostics on it. I know this is what it is. And the same thing here. This is what it is. We done did our homework. We got all the scholarly knowledge in need. We know how to translate the scripture properly. This is what it is. Take your feelings and put them somewhere. You need to start dealing with reality. The realization of things. And that's what we go on. Because if you don't. You're going to be caught in a, in a, a delusion. Your feelings could get you in a delusion. Okay? Because everybody got feelings. This one got feelings and emotion. That one got feelings and emotion. That one got feelings. God gave you the word, but you don't want to go by the word. You don't even want to interpret the word. You don't want to know the knowledge. You want to go by your feelings. No, don't, don't, get, don't, don't do us like that. Okay? When you make comments, keep your feelings to yourself. Go do your homework. I, we love you, but do your homework. Because everybody have been a part of this organization, they done, they go do their homework. They've been checking me many, many years ago. They ain't just started. And that's how you know, find out and understand truth. You need to see this, people. You need to know this. You need to know this. And in his day, Judah shall be saved. That means this nation is going to rise. This, this rulership is going to rise up at this time and take its proper place. And Israel shall dwell safely. Mean that bloodline. Israel and his family, the bloodline, will be saved. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called. The Lord our righteousness. The Lord our righteousness. Why? Because the right knowledge is coming forth now. The right, what you're supposed to know, the real deal is coming now. The real knowledge. Let's deal with this. Okay? Now, we have given you many, we have given you many revelations, we have given you a chart so you can understand the revelations, okay? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to move on. I'm going to talk about this so you'll know why, why we need to be concerned about Judah in America, why we need to be concerned about Israel, and why is Israel loose, okay? Now, when you look at it, you hear us talk about, uh, in the beginning, it's a twofold prophecy. They talk about uh, seven, uh, seven weeks from the commandment going forth to restore and to build Jerusalem. Uh, it should be seven weeks until the Messiah, the Prince. It should be seven weeks, okay? And which is 360 days a year, seven years, seven weeks in that prophecy means seven years, 360 days a year. When you add that up, that's 2,520 days. If you look at November 29th, 1947, and you got to get, do your chart. And uh, uh, you got to count the 29th in that because when the UN did this to make Palestine and Israel 
shared to give of that land between Palestine and Israel. You had uh, the UN doing it. It was on the date 1947, November 29th. So that day wasn't over when the count starts. So you count that day and you count from November 29, 1947. And you go uh, with this, you go 2,520 days. That will take you to October the 27th, 1954, the birth of the Messiah the Prince. Now, why is it talking about uh, uh, Israel at that time? Because that's the fake Israel. And the only one going to know that is that that uh, initiate because what is it saying the Jews supposed to be waiting on the Messiah to set that up but you had the Rothschilds them sock that up being Gary and some others but the Rothschilds sock that up so they gave you a fake Israel before the Messiah came on the scene to give you the true Israel and see you don't know that See, just because the government do something, that don't mean it's in the will of God. That's why you see in Revelation, I think around the seventh chapter, he said, them that say they are Jews and they are not, but they are the synagogue of Satan. That means that they are doing man's will and not God's will. They're not doing it according to the Torah. They're not doing according to the Old Testament. They're doing it because they rich and they got power and they control the money, so they're going to do it. What they want to do. You look and you'll see the Rothschilds own that area, the, the city of Jerusalem, called Jerusalem. They owned that before Israel ever became a nation. In the 1800s, they owned that. They were already preparing their plan for the future of being able to establish Israel over there. So all this stuff was carefully orchestrated. But you don't know that because you don't know the prophetic knowledge of the arts. You need to know this stuff. And so you can move on. Now, you'll see that happen at that time. And that takes you to 1954. So October 1954 is the birth. 27 is the birth of the Messiah, the Prince. But he got to come into himself. And, and the scriptures say he's going to come in low, lowly, low degree. That means he's going to come as a carpenter. He's going to come as a, a family, that a, a working class family. He's not going to come in the royal environment. That's why they don't copy the knowledge of Jesus, uh, uh, of the Messiah, the Prince, and they put, apply it to Jesus. They call Jesus the carpenter, son, the carpenter. And that's applied to the Messiah, the Prince. They say that Jesus went into the temple and he was able to, in Egypt, into the temple, he able to talk to the scribe and come up with knowledge with the same book that they didn't, they couldn't even conceive. That's what's happening right now. We using the same book everybody else uses, but we using the arts. And they can't conceive this because they, they teach in literal. The hermet, uh, hermeneutic in the literal. It's four different areas, but they only stand in the literal. And like I say, 30 years ago, they told you the book was in code, but they're not teaching you no codes. They're not teaching you Hebrew typology. And this is why you're under that condition. Let's move on. Now, he's supposed to be born in October the 22nd, 1954, and he's supposed to come on the scene, his first spot, October, because the scriptures say 62 weeks, 62 years. Now, he's out of the womb, so the days will be counted as 365.25 days now. Okay, when he was in the womb, it was 360. But when he out, it's regular days, okay? And, and, and October the 22nd, 2016, that's when he's supposed to be coming on the scene to do his job. He already born, he walking around, but he got to be made into who he's supposed to be. And at that time, you see the scriptures say uh, uh, 62 years. 62 years come to... He is 62 years old, October 22nd, 1954. Okay, but other things is happening at that time. You need to know what's going on at that time. Not all about him. It's about some things because the scripture tell you that he's not going to be anointed to that level in uh, 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 Daniel 9, 24 into 70 weeks or 70 years of 365.25 that means that's going to bring him to October the 22nd 2013 was last Sunday. Understand this because he has to be uh, in a certain power move for God to shape this thing so you'll know why Israel is catching hell over there right now. 
They done created something that ain't in the will of God. And that's why it's happening. And God is going to destroy it so he can build his kingdom in the southern part of North America. And see, you don't know this. And you don't know why. Well, why? Why are these people over there? Why are the Palestinians going through there? Why are Hamas and all the other people doing this? Why? Why are Israel them doing that? They doing it because God is breaking it up. He said, I'm a sin. Of a he meant east wind. That means you're going to a blast with the east wind. That means warfare. Seven years of warfare. And that's what we're dealing with right now. So you want to know it? Get your preachers to learn the truth and quit lying to you. Back in Israel, doing this, saying, making Palestine be something it ain't. This is the problem with it. They don't know the scripture. And they ain't you're called by God. And you running behind these people because they got this big old church and this all you ever knew. You ain't trying to search the scripture. You ain't going to God. God, lead me in the true light, Father. Take me the right way. You ain't trying to do none of that. You don't want to do that. You want to stay where you at. You want to be like the people's of Lot time. You want to be like the people's of Noah time. God sent you a prophet and he walking around right now and you don't give a damn about him. All you want to do is do what you do. Oh, I know this. Oh, he's from Yale. He's from Harvard. He's from Brown. He's from Princeton. He's Reverend so and so, Reverend Doctor so and so. And they've been teaching you these literal lies, and you've been running with it, talking about some Jesus came two thousand years ago when that was a Roman plot to get you to think to get the power to them because they wanted to make the Messiah the prince before his time. All the religions were doing that. You got Islam did the same thing. But no, you don't, oh, don't talk about Islam now because Islam ain't like Christianity. It is. Who they say told Muhammad that he was a prophet. A Christian leader told him he was a prophet. When did uh, 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 the, the, the Torah and the, when did the, 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 the Muhammad come up in the Islamic writings? When, how many years from his death, he came up in the Islamic writing. Now about a hundred and something years before they even put his name anywhere. And they always talk about the man. The man. The man didn't, the, 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 the prophet, the man. See, I'm not coming against Islam because Islam is a part of the whole. That's why you're having a problem with the Palestinians and the Israelis right now. You're having a problem with, with I would say, Judaism and Islam right now over there and Christianity see Christianity always been in the back of it all pushing the, pushing everything see they've been pushing it they've been pushing Islam a certain way they've been pushing Judaism a certain way and you ain't been noticing that you need to study my people that's going on now what's happening we tell you about the seven years. What way the seven years come in? The seven years come in, in uh, after uh, after uh, uh, 2022, because you got a 21 year judgment from 2000 to 2022. That judgment come then. You got that east wind come. That seven weeks a seven year east wind come, which is known as the Passover. That come from 2020 to 2027. 21 to 27. That's that them years are good, bad, Bruce or bad. And you're gonna see them. Because the first year we went over there and, and uh Ukraine and, and telling uh, uh the Ukrainian uh politicians, etc. We got your back and all that. And then uh 22, Putin went and invaded Ukraine and 23. He did more, and not only do you have it with Ukraine, now you got Egypt in there. And then in, in 20 23 also they were bugging uh, uh, China and all this other stuff. So now you got a, a blown wall. A wall is over there in the Middle East, but they call it the East Wind. So what it is, that East Wind coming over to America in 2025 and 2026. So you might as well get ready. In 24, you need to be getting your food storage because you're going to have a war. You're going to fight China and the Soviet Union. You're going to fight them. And they're going to fight you. So you people, your, your politicians are dragging you into something, trying to fulfill Bible prophecy, but they're doing it in a literal thing, so they think they're going to have this and that. No, 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 no. 
They're messing you up. They're causing problems for you. But what, what else happened? Oh, you had uh, in Revelation to talk about the uh, 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 Babylon going to be judged in one hour. What is one hour? We explain that to you. You got from uh, 2000, you got from 2040 to 2042. That's that one hour. How you come up with that one hour? You do what it says in Peter. Second Peter, it tells you one day is like a thousand years unto the Lord. A thousand years is like one day. You take 24 hours and you divide it to the thousand and you get uh, 41.66 years. That's how you get that. That goes from 2000 to 2044. And in that time, you're having all these different events happen. You're going to have an exodus. After this Passover of 2027, you're going to have an exodus 2028 to 2042. That's when they gonna, the war be over and the people be coming to the promised land, the ones that are supposed to come to the promised land. And black folks will get their Cherokee nation back in the south, which is the a, a nation of uh, of Judah or the nation of Israel that's coming to the south because what happened? You didn't even know that the southern, during the time of the Civil War, the south had dominated your land and called it their land. When they said, uh, this is Confederate. See, the Confederate don't come from them. Originally, they come from the Cherokee. It's come from the Iroquois. And they not only took your land, but they, and they couldn't keep it like that because it wasn't for them. It was for you to have at a certain time when the Messiah and the Prince come on the scene at that time. See, God have already put all this in the atmosphere. He have already put this, coded this in the universe. And you got to see this. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to go over our names and then we'll go on. Uh, Jamie Stockton, Tracy Beard, Antoinette Mike Mullen, Masia Gordon, Charles Lindsay, Lindsay, the Neophytes Incorporation, Leo, uh, Leo, Leon James, Elvin Jernier, uh, Tamira Fennell, and Steve Coleman. I thank Steve Coleman for the, the uh, birthday present that he gave me. And um, I'm going to say it like that. Uh, I couldn't do nothing but smile. So I know that, that he's, a, he's a good friend. Thank you, uh, Steve Coleman, for that. Now, and some of y'all others who are thinking about late birthday, you can do that too, but I ain't going to push it. But I, I do thank Steve for what he's done. Okay. Now, Jeremiah 23, 27 to 28. Therefore, behold, the day comes, said the Lord, thought. Now remember, this is thought talking. The day comes, said the Lord, thought. The day comes, said the Lord, thought. They shall no more, they shall no more say, the Lord liveth, which brought up the children, which are the fathers of Israel, the children of Israel, which is Lewis, the children of Lewis, out of the land of Egypt. See, what they've been talking about is that, 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 that the people of God in the story of Moses coming out of Egypt, they don't realize that's a metaphor. They don't realize that's an allegory writing about the future. Now he's saying that they're going to learn the truth of this. They're going to have the art and they're going to learn the truth of it. So it'll be no more saying that they came out of Egypt because that story is about the future. It's going to be telling you where they're going to come from. No more that they come out of the land of Egypt. Verse 8. But the Lord lived, which brought up, and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country. The north country is America. Out of the north country. North country, you're in America. It's known as the north country. Okay? Out of the north country. Okay? Let's look at it very carefully. Out of the north country... Okay, and we got to see out of the north country, but not only country, you got to see the counties, okay? Because Florida, North America got counties, okay? And out of the north counties, bring them down south, out of the north counties, okay? Out of the north county, counties and from all countries. Now it's talking about countries. Now, why do we say countries? It say counties? Because you know you're in the north. In America got counties, but also countries. See, what's happening right now is you got a faithful Jewish group of peoples over in Israel.
who know that they're whores, know that they don't supposed to have a nation of Israel right now until the Messiah and the Prince come, because that's what the Torah teaches them. So they know we don't supposed to be having no Israel. The Zionists come in here and started this and made this and stuff like this with the British and the Americans. So this is not what our scripture teach. Although they live in there, they know that it's not. And you find a lot of them when the Palestinian them is protesting, a lot of them rabbis is there protesting with them against the things that Israel is doing in the Gaza Strip and what they're doing to the genocides and what they're doing to different people. Although American Christians be dumping their money over there, but they ain't read nothing about what's really going on in Israel. And how they doing different people and how they letting some men and, and not letting the other ones in and stuff like that. See, you ain't, ain't, ain't concerned. See, because you've been learning the Bible literally and you ain't been knowing the truth. But God wants you to know the truth now. Because that Israel over there, that fake Israel over there is not the one that God is putting there. They the one that the Rothschilds and the other ones have put in place. Okay? And it ain't the one that God says. See, you got to build, the, the, you got to establish that real Israel in the Fertile Crescent area. Okay? In that area where they say uh, 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 the Euphrates River at, and the Euphrates River is used as an allegorical. That means in the Gulf, of, where the Gulf of Mexico at, going around Florida, all the way around, touching Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, all the way around Texas. The Fertile Crescent area. That's here, my people. That's why, that's why Napoleon invaded that Egypt over there and came over to the old Egypt and invaded it. And two years from that time, he came over here because Napoleon was part of that royal environment, a part of those aristocrats that knew the truth. They knew the truth. That's why you keep hearing me have Sister Corinthia read to you that letter that the governor that was over here, that the Spanish governor wrote back to the king telling you that he rules on this soil. And he mentioned in that letter, Florida. Mr. Parkman rightly says that the spirit of Spanish enterprise in America is expressed in the following address of Dr. Pedro de Santander to the king in 1557 of the expedition of the Soto. It is lawful that your majesty, like a good shepherd appointed by the hand of the eternal father, should tend and lead out your sheep since the Holy Spirit has shown spreading pastures whereon a feeding lost sheep, which have been snatched away by the dragon. The demon. These pastures are the new world wherein is comprised Florida, now in possession of the demon. And here he makes himself adored and revered. This is the land of promise possessed by idolaters, the Amorite, Amalekite, Moabite, Canaanite. This is the land promised by the Eternal Father to the faithful, since we are commanded by God in the Holy Scriptures to take it from them, being idolaters, and by reason of their idolatry and sin, to put them all to the night, leaving no living thing, save maidens and children, their cities robbed and sacked, their walls and houses leveled to the and you need to see this, because see, this stuff you, you ain't, ain't, ain't listening to. So you going by what they teach you in your school system. They're not going to tell you these true things in no school, no commoners. You got to go beyond that. You got to do your homework. You got to get high into the academic arena for this information. Even your, 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 even your scholars, your professors, they know certain things secretly, but they're not going to tell you. Uh-uh, they ain't going to get in trouble like that. Because they know certain things you just don't talk about, although it's true. And you need to see this. Let's move on with this. Okay? Let's move on with this. Okay? Let's go with uh, uh, this part here. It said, And from all, all countries, whether I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. So them rabbis over there in Israel that know that they are hoarders over there in Israel and they don't supposed to be there, them rabbis got to come to a conclusion and they got to learn through this teaching that they supposed to be in America, in the area of the Fertile Crescent. They got to know that. They got to come to a conclusion where they understand through using the arts, what's really going on? Because in the book of Revelation, he said, he said, uh, 
thou art uh, a rich. So that means you got to use them. You got to use them and know these truthism and teach these truthism to your people. Because there's a slot for you because the Messiah Prince know that he got to be a light to the Jews and the Gentiles. And those Jews over there are converted Gentiles. They are Khazars that have hold on to the Torah and hold on to the God of Abraham and Isaac. And they have a right to be here just like the rest. Okay? Someone asked me, well, if they come here, they're going to be trying to rule over. No, 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 no. God got Judah and God got that family. And God going to put it back like it's supposed to be. So this is God doing, not man doing. Everybody going to fall in line and do what they're supposed to do. Okay, now you should see this. Now, Genesis 16 and 11. And the angel of the Lord said unto Hagar. Said unto Hagar. And you got to see this. Now, what, what, why are we talking about Hagar? And the angel of the Lord said unto Hagar. Now, like I said, you got two events happening over there. You got the Hebrews. You got it. Uh, you got it. Uh, uh, the Muslim, or the uh, the peoples of Islam, and you got the Christians. Okay, they're causing all this habit. Called happen Israel and the Zionist Jews. The weakness habit on everybody in that area. And you got to see this now. And the reason I'm talking about Hagar because Islam, they built their religion. In their movement of Hagar. Hagar. Hagar's son. And you got to see that. No, more people don't get into this. They don't get into this. And you need to see this. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Hagar, Hebrews, Islam, okay, said unto them, Behold, thou art with child. Now you got to watch this. Thou art with child and shall bring shall bring a son and shall call his name Ishmael. Now what is Ishmael? You need to see this now. Let's look at Ishmael. Ishmael. Ishmael in a man is the same thing. Now when they talk about Sarah uh, uh, had a child, she had a child indeed. Because she owned Hagar, so her child was Hagar's child. That's why you'll see that word indeed. That's what it means. Deed. Ownership. And you need to understand that. So, so Hagar, uh, uh, Sarah didn't have no baby. So when they say she was old, up in age, she was up in age, she couldn't have no baby. See, and they want to put that miracle birth with Hagar. Uh, Sarah had a miracle baby, birth like, like Mary had a miracle birth. Mary didn't have no miracle birth because there was no Mary. That go back to Isis and Horus. That's where that story of Mary all come from. But no, most people, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. And in my head, you need to hear it because it's time to get out of this delusion that you've been placed into. And because if you stay in it, you're damned by God. So wake up. Now, let's deal with this here. Okay. Uh, Ishmael. Ishmael. Let's look at it. L E, you see, L E I S. Okay. L E I S. The M, you turn it upside down, you got the W. L E W I S. You take your A, you put it there. Ishmael is Louis A. Okay? That's what it is. Emmanuel is Louis A. That's what it is. See, you've been lied to. Because they don't tell you nothing about no arts. And you've been lied to. And you need to learn the truth. Because the Lord have. Because the Lord heard thy affliction. Where, where is this affliction? This affliction have happened for 400 years. From 1619. Around August 1st, 1619. They passed a law. To punish indentured servants slash slaves. All the way to. Most people say. Uh, uh, 2019. But when you count 360 days. It's actually 2013. October the 30th. 2013. But I just went along with saying. Uh, uh, the 400 years. Like we normally see it. Because most people could. Could mentally conceive that. But when you get heavy in the prophetic realm and you're showing the other prophecies that go on to that, then you can't use 2019, August 1st, 2019. You got to use October the 30th, 2013, because it helped fulfill other prophecies. It's very important. Now, you need to know that. But right now, we're going to leave that so you can understand 400 years from 1619. 
2019. We're going to leave it like that for now. Okay. And it says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay. Now this is the this is the other part in Isaiah, Isaiah 7 14. Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Shall give you a sign. You're gonna have a sign. Okay? And what he told you that sign is? The sign is the Jonah. He said, Now what is the sign? He tell you. In Matthews, he tell you. But this is an evil generation. They seek of a sign. And there's no sign to be given them but the sign of Jonah the prophet. So the Lord is giving you Jonah. He giving you Jonah. But see, they, the church and the Eurocentric world and, and the Rome was giving you a Jesus, a made up Jesus. Okay? And Jesus ain't telling you that. And that's what most people, church folks, are looking for. The return of Jesus to come in the clouds and don't know the clouds is about cloud technology and take them up in the air, etc. But they overlook the scripture say, Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Earth is the United States of America. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. See, they don't want to talk about that. And just why I say, God will give you a sign. What is the sign? He's going to give you the sign of the Son of Man. He's going to come like Jonah. He said, this is the evil generation. They sing up a sign. But there's no sign to be given them but the sign of Jonah the prophet. But as Jonah was a sign unto the Ninevite, so shall the Son of Man be to this generation. So the Son of Man or this Messiah the Prince must come to a, a land like Assyria because that's where Jonah was. And he must come to a city like Nineveh. That's where Jonah was. And the city like Nineveh, which is the oldest city area of Assyria, and the oldest city area of America is Jacksonville slash St. Augustine. People, the prophecy is here. If you don't want to know the truth, it's a problem with you. Really. You is really a delusion and nobody can help you if you can't see these prophecies unreveal themselves and unfold themselves now. You got a problem if you can't. If you stuck into that church thing, that Baptist, that Pentecostal, that Mormon, that seven-day Adventist, that Jehovah Witness, if you stuck in there and refuse to get out of it, you are damned by God. Ain't no time for no plan no more. Either you got to seek the truth or you want to be damned by God. And what God cared about the strong, he didn't care about the strong man no time, did he? He didn't care about the strong man a lot time, did he? He didn't care about the strong man Jonah time, did he? And you got to see this, my people. There ain't no play time now. I love you, but I must tell you the truth. And you need to see this. Now, he's saying to Isaiah, in Isaiah 7, 14, Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Let's deal with Emmanuel. Let's look at Emmanuel. You got it. I am there. But let's go start him. L-E L-E the M is W. L-E-W okay. And you got I there go your I, I, and you know you take the M, and the M could turn into a W or S. L E W I S. You got the S there. Okay? And then you got the A. So you got Lewis A. That's the R. These are codes. And you got to know that, my people, because the scripture tells you that. And you got to move on. But then it say, what does it say about him? Okay? It say. It should bear a son. And then it said, call him Emmanuel. Then it said, butter and honey shall he eat. What is that telling him butter and honey? What is butter and honey? Vegetarian. He cannot eat meat. He cannot eat flesh. See, that's what, what Adam ate. The second Adam come in and ain't eating no, no meat and flesh. A certain part of his life, that's why they got to build him into what he is. When he was a child, he ate everything and everything that mom and daddy gave him. But at a certain time, he got to make a covenant with God. And that covenant is saying, he has said, blood thereof with the flesh thereof. If you eat it, you will surely die. And he know that. To have eternal life, to go from mortal to immortality, you got to make a covenant where you're not going to do what you did. And Adam 
burning them dead in the fall. You got to see this. This is why I say it. It say it tell them about the honey and stuff. And you got to see that. It say butter and honey. Show you he's he has to be a vegetarian. He got to become a vegetarian because you got to understand where it say. If you eat the blood thereof with the flesh thereof, you will surely die. What is the reversal of that? If you don't eat the blood thereof with the flesh thereof, you will live. And he understand that initiative. And so he refused to do it. And he just go along with the scripture. Say he's going to be that. He entered into a covenant. So you won't be a vegetarian because of uh, when you know this kind of knowledge because of the fact that, oh, everybody else. No, you'll be it because God doesn't let you know. If you want to live, you want to get this knowledge, you want to have this stuff that I got for you, then leave that flesh alone. Don't let that energy upon them animals, that fear energy enter into your presence, into your body. Don't do it. Don't do it, Lewis. Don't do it, people. And you must see this. You must see that. And it says this, so, butter and honey shall he eat. Thought. He may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. See, it's evil to eat things in opposition to God. But see, you don't know that because you've been brought up under this Gentile presence. And you don't know it and you're doing the things in opposition to God. And it's evil, my people. We got to get out of the evil thing. That's why he said this is an evil generation. They seek of a sign. This new century man done got you into doing evil things and you don't even know it. You're doing things against the will of God. You right now praising that Israel overshadow uh, uh, the Palestinian and they do this and that when God is to take Israel out because it's a fake, it is a fake Israel. You need to wake up now. You need to wake up and smell the roses now. Because this is not a time to be playing around. Because they're going to drag you right into this war. And when they drag you into this war, you're already in it. But when they drag you with your military men, etc., into this war, God going to take Israel down and America government down. Because Israel cannot be what it is without America embracing it. America and Britain embracing it. And that's why China is building its forces. That's why Russia is building its forces. That's why the Brits got China, Russia, India, Africa. These people got 85% of the world population to fight against you. And you get into something because your leaders put you into it. You ain't doing it on your own. Your leaders and you picking leaders that the corporations back in and funding, and you tell them, that's my leader. That's like McConnell, is my leader. This person is my leader. Biden is my leader. You know, and all the other people, devils is your leader. And especially black folks, they run behind Biden like, oh, he's a good guy. You know what? They'll get the Democrat out of uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, embrace him. Because it wasn't for the Democrats, he wouldn't have won. But they embrace him, and then what they do, they, 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 they don't look at his history where he talked bad about black folks. They try to make Trump and his dad look like they bad when this man was in office and he was against things. Even his vice president said some things, the policies he was, he was pushing to keep her from being able to do the things she wanted to do. See, but no, it's easy to forget about that because he circled black people all around his cabinet. He circled black people around him and black folks look at that Oh, he must be pretty good. And he's a devil. He's pushing the capitalist agenda. He's a devil. And people went, well, that's your president. I don't care who he is. In America, you're supposed to have a freedom of speech. And you're supposed to call a devil a devil when you see it. And he ain't the only devil. It's a lot of them devils. You got uh, 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 the other one, the vice president, talking about the main thing we need to focus on is uh, 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 the climate uh, and uh, electric cars and population control. Another demon. But see, you don't want to hear that. And what hit me so bad is that when I heard her say that and I played it on the video, I played it. Before I played it on the video, I heard her and then I heard all these people clapping, clapping. I said, they ain't heard a darn thing this woman said. They just did up for the hype, the excitement. You got to get out of that, people, your feelings and your emotions. 
You got to get in the knowledge of God so you can live. Because God is going to resurrect his people. Hell or high water. He's going to resurrect his people. And he's going to build a nation here on this soil of North America. And you need to see that. You need to see it now. It's the end of this lecture. We'd like you to make your donation. We still need those 10 people. I'm not going to start all about the 10, my people. We still need those pe 10 people to step up with that 100K. 100 and others to help bring it forth, okay? We need some to step up and with a 1K, 2K, 5K, 10K. Don't, they ain't leaving y'all. They 100K. They know who they are. They, body, they, they, they are who they are. But this 1K, 2K, 5K, and 100K, we need that. I had one... Uh, uh, Remember one individual just uh, yesterday, he made it his business to come see me and drop his 1K on that. And I thank God for that. So all the individuals, y'all need to step up to the plate. Send your 1K, send your 2K, send your 5K, send your 10K. If you want to bring it in person, hey, just call Sister Corinthian, come to me. Let's get this done, people. Because this year coming up is no joke. It's the election year. You need to know everything that God is going to do. The rest of these next four years. Because you need to know people. It's critical. I ain't trying to scare you. I'm trying to get you ahead of the game. So you ain't got to worry about you protecting you and your family. And you're doing the right thing. You can make your donations to Louis Armstrong Ministry at 7536 Dana Lane North, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. Or you can make it at Cross Rock Incorporated. You can use the same address at 7536 Jane Lane North, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. Or with Cross Rock, you go on Givelify on your mobile app on the charitable. That's Givelify on your mobile app on the charitable and make your donation. You also can go on PayPal at ArmstrongLewisJ at gmail.com. That's PayPal, ArmstrongLewisJ at gmail.com. Also with Cash App, Cash App, dollar sign, SWAU, 1954. That's Cash App, dollar sign, SWAU, 1954. And we need to see this and step up to the plate and do the things necessary so we can build this and we can awaken God's chosen people. Now, we'll say a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for permitting us to have this information. Father, thank you for raising up a people, a people, a people with so much courage and wisdom. They do not mind coming against the odds. Some of them have told me sometimes they step to individuals and it's difficult to reach them. And I tell them, don't worry about it. You don't force feed this to people. Because those ones that are supposed to have it, they're going to have it. And as time goes on, more are going to search for the truth. Because they're not going to want to catch the hell that they are in. Heavenly Father, open your people's eyes. So they can see you. And they can understand that you're coming in the name of thought. Heavenly Father, give us ability to move in this world freely as we build ourselves to prepare ourselves for what's going to happen. Take care of our families, Father. Keep us healthy. Keep our economics right. Keep our joy in our life, Father. And I say this in the name of the Lord and Savior, the Lord, and the source, the God Almighty.